lectures <coughs> about the forgotten food. And uh, today, actually, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Khalil Jawasra for being with us because he got COVID-19 and he's a little bit ill, but he uh, insisted he will do the, the lecture today. So Dr. Khalil is a specialist in uh, animal uh, genetic resources and actually he's one of the eminent researchers in this field. So Dr. Khalil, please, the floor is yours to uh, start, please. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. Actually, many thanks for this opportunity. Actually, Arinina usually uh, give us the opportunity to talk about something, uh, new things. And uh, usually, Dr. Reda push us to dig more and more and have information. Even if you don't have information, you do need to, to, to create things. So this is a new topic. Actually, uh, if we are talking about uh, the forgotten food, uh, before I start my uh, my lecture, uh, I do need to give you a note about the information or the collected information uh, that have been inserted in my lecture. Uh, usually, if you if you search in Google, you will find a lot of uh, references actually related to the uh, crops. Uh, plant, animal genetic resources, and or plant genetic resources and others. But uh, rarely you find something related to livestock. So uh, my lecture here uh, uh, titled The Contribution of Livestock to Food Security and the Impact of Neglected Underutilized Species on the Availability of the Food uh, from Animal Origin. This is uh, my uh, the title of my lecture, and I hope to be able to uh, give you the information and to discuss it with you. Uh, as usually, we do need to start with uh, the introduction, and all of us uh, can understand the necessity or the importance of the of livestock to to the humanity. Actually, if we're talking about uh, uh, protein sources. We are talking about energy sources. The major contributors to those two major nutritional aspects are uh, the livestock, actually. And uh, we do need to know that uh, the livestock also fulfill many, many, many things, actually, among them uh, the economic status of the uh, worldwide, actually, to all populations. And also, uh, we, do, uh, we understand the importance of the uh, the food to uh, our nutritional status of the human kinds and the others in terms of uh, protein and minerals, vitamins, energy, and others, and also the social needs for many uh, world countries. And uh, you do, we do, we all know that uh, the uh, the social needs for the the livestock is very important for many many societies. Actually, if you go to some societies, the 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 the, the, the indigenous knowledge actually that gained for, from the livestock is very important, and also those communities are very linked with those uh, animals. And uh, the importance also of livestock also contributes a lot to the GDP, which is the gross uh, domestic products. And before I uh, go through or to, uh, go to the second or third slide, I do need to return back to this picture, actually. This picture is captured actually from, from Oman. You can see the, 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 the very, uh, very nice uh, view and uh, from Salala. If you know Salala, you can, you can see those very important uh, things and you can see that the life of the care are grazing within this very nice environment. environment. And also, I, I add a lot of uh, picture uh, uh, for our local breeds found here in the Arab region or Arab countries. So you can see the, the, the local breeds that found in, in Sudan and also the other things. So uh, also uh, we do need to understand and also all of us can uh, know that the exponential population growth currently is also expected to increase. And this, this growth needs to be met by high nutritional uh, uh, things. Actually, we are looking for the quantity, for the quantity and the quality of the, uh, of the food that contributes a lot to, to the humankind, actually. So that the demands are increased and also the intensification of production of the production livestock, livestock production 
uh, famously termed as livestock revolution. You do need to understand, all of us understand that the livestock revolution is very important. Dr. Now, Dr. Khalil, specific... Dr. Khalil, can you enlarge the uh, slide? What? Can you enlarge the size of the slide? Okay. Yeah. Sorry for that. So we can see that also uh, uh, the intensification of the production of large stock uh, is famously termed a livestock revolution. And this thing also, uh, the intensification is the, an important effect actually that uh, uh, maximize the importance of certain breeds and also minimize uh, for the others. However, as this livestock revolution in the intensification of livestock production has generated several negative environmental, nutritional, health, and socioeconomic trade-off. So this is, we, we have many, many advantages related to the intensification of the livestock production, but also we can see or face negative impacts on the environment, in the nutrition, and in the health and socioeconomic, and even on the livestock breeds or species that can be exploited for, for supporting what we call the food security worldwide and in certain countries. This uh, paradox also, uh, whereby livestock provides and destroys simultaneously, has resulted in increasing efforts to reduce negative trade-offs by developing a broader and deeper understanding of the livestock production. This is the main thing that to be known. And also there is a lot of attention on conventional livestock species, such as the livestock, sorry, the cattle, poultry, sheep, and goat to meet the growing demand of, uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the food from the uh, animal species. So if you, if you know that with me, that the cattle and also the poultry, the sheep, those are the farm animals that has been used since long, long, long time ago to, to produce the, uh, the main thing for human consumption. But other species were neglected. This is the main thing. In contrast, despite their known benefits, some categories of livestock, uh, such as the poultry, we are concentrating here in the poultry, other species or other breeds of, uh, from the poultry, such as the, uh, the guinea fowl, the local chicken, the duck, the geese, the rabbits, and also the donkeys. In addition to the donkeys also, and others are neglected. Also, we can see the buffaloes, they are the major contribution, contributor also of meat and also of milk with high quality milk actually. And we can see the local cattle breeds and also the sheep breeds, whether they are- Did you change the slide? Because we are still on the first slide where you have introduction. I actually, I changed it. No, now no it's I, not changing I, I'm you... switching. If, I'm switching from one to another right now. Oh, no, I don't know whether not... you can. You can see. Maybe I can. I don't know why. Victor, okay. can you can share مرة ثانية. Share مرة ثانية. وعمل وكبر الشاشة خليها على large it. Please, if you large it. Yeah, I, I will try. Okay. Okay. Can you see it now? Okay. Now it's good. Okay. Let me let me change the slide. Oh. Do you can you observe the the switching? Yes. The, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So it's changing. It's, it's okay, it. okay now. Okay, so from this from this uh, uh, slide, we can see there that there are a lot of species that contribute uh, to the uh, uh, to, to food security actually worldwide. And I give you some information or some uh, nomination for some species that are contribute a lot, such as the buffaloes, local cattle breeds, sheep, and the other. But they can they continue continue to be neglected. Actually, even they produce and they produce a lot of or a minimum amount of production from meat or from milk, they continue to be neglected actually. And this is the main reason, the main reason for, for this neglection actually is just only related to the superior new model or modern breeds that found uh, worldwide, such as, for example, if you go to the to the Frisian cattle, which is the super cow actually in milk production. Uh, the local breed cannot cannot compete with this with, with this breed because it it produce, produce a lot of milk actually with 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 considerable actually fat percent but the local breed have the potential actually and we will see within the next slides that what is the the potential of our local breed that can be exploited to compete with those other uh, superior or new or modern breeds now 
Emerging evidence shows that the majority of livestock species, such as those reported to be neglected, okay, they can also provide, those are, they can provide nutritional, economic, environmental, and also cultural benefits, actually, that also contribute <clears throat> toward, in addition or in, to the women actually empowerment. Actually, if you go to the all the all societies that raise the local breeds, even in Asia or in Africa, we can see that the, the, the households or the women are contribute contribute a lot in raising such local breeds. They do the, 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 the actually they, they work with them, they produce a lot of things with them. They have the actually the steering just only to 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 rear those uh, animals. So they can contribute the neglected unutilized species uh, provide a lot of things among of the among them is the women empowerment okay collectively as you see these benefits could minimize the negative trade uh, offs associated with conventional livestock production and also support uh, food security now i will give you an overview about the uh, the breeds uh, or the uh, according to the FAO 2022, you can see this this figure give us the breeds categories and uh, FAO actually categorized this uh, those uh, breeds in terms of local mammal uh, mammalian breeds and you can see this is the local the red one and they have a lot of things actually they have more than half of the other breeds, if you go to the other categories, you can see that we have something related to the regional transboundary mammalian breeds. And all of us know what we do mean by the transboundary breeds, that uh, we can add or define it as those breeds that can be found <clears throat> in the neighboring countries and they can cross the borders. This is the what do we mean by the regional transboundary mammalian breeds. And also we can see this is this portion just only this portion is an international transboundary mammalian breeds, and this is a little bit, uh, uh, it doesn't have that much uh, population, uh, but or our count, let us say count because we are talking about the breeds right here, and the international transboundary mammalian breeds can be defined also those, those breeds that can be, can be found in different regions of the world, not only in, in certain regions. In addition to the local avian breeds and also the regional transboundary avian breeds in addition to the, to the other. So we do need to concentrate on the local breeds that can find the, the red one, which constitute more than 50% of the, of the majority of the local breed found, found worldwide. Now, if we compare this figure with the other figure with the second one right here can found here in the, in the right hand, you can see the, the, the status or the risk of extinction for some certain breeds and FAO recognize this thing. And you can see that uh, uh, we have here, for example, in, in, in North America, if you see the red one horn, this is the percent of the local breeds that are at risk. What, what, what do we mean by at risk? It means it's risk of extinction, risk of extinction, extinction actually. So we have many breeds that are uh, at risk. The green one are not, uh, not at risk, and you can see the majority, you can see in all regions right here found in worldwide actually, that we have unknown situation of many, many breeds found worldwide. Actually, you can see the gray, the gray color here, okay? You can see the unknown in Africa and Asia, even in Europe, we have some unknown information related to those breeds. We, know, we, don't, we know nothing ab about those things. Because of this thing, actually FAO, and we can say that the Arab Organization for Agricultural Development start to follow up for some certain breeds or to look for those unknown breeds. And they start establishing something called in an in, in FAO called that is uh, database and also we have the uh, animal uh, network in the uh, Arab Organization for Agricultural Development award that also establish a, a network for the Arabian countries that, that collect information related to the local breeds and also the exotic breeds found uh, in the Arab countries. And the, 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 actually the objective of this thing, just only to know the status of those animals, whether they are at risk or extinction or they are normal things. And also we actually, I have the opportunity actually to be part of the establishment of the, uh, the Arab organization network. 
uh, and you, uh, I think we've, uh, since our, uh, seven years ago, we, we established it and it is running right now. And we have a lot of information that inserted in that uh, uh, database or uh, let us uh, uh, Arabian database. So we have a lot of uh, breeds, but uh, the majority are unknown. Some of them are at risk and the others are normal without uh, any threatened. So let us continue. We have some certain reasons actually for the, uh, uh, the, the neglection actually underutilized uh, for some certain breeds. Among those uh, 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 factors or reasons uh, for the neglection or underutilized breeds or species because of their small size. Uh, some certain, you know, the farmers usually prefer to have a large size animals if they are willing to have <clears throat> meat production. You know, the large size usually is related or correlated with the high amount of meat produced from this, those animals. So the, the small size of the animals is the main reason, the reason actually affecting or uh, uh, affecting the, uh, the breed existence actually and being not neglected. Also, we can see that the, also the size of the animal inferring a lack of apparent of eco economic importance. Also the lack of unified name. You know that we have, uh, we have local breeds, some uh, in some certain village, they nominate it as like, uh, uh, they give it a certain name, other uh, governors give it another name and they are, uh, un uh, unified actual name for neglected livestock species and also are relatively under, funded animals in breeding sector. If you go worldwide, we can see some something called breeding, uh, uh, breeding stations, or they have something called cooperative of animal breeding for sheep breeders or cattle breeder and the other. So in this action, on the, on for those animals that are considered to be neglected, they are, they are, they are underfunded. They don't have the, 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 the researchers or the, the, the population or the human who is interested, any researcher or any livestock owner who, are, who is interested in, uh, in raising such animals, they don't have funds just only to, to raise those animals. So, our, so this is another reason for this thing. And understanding of marginalized livestock species is considered among important to evaluate possible socioeconomic implication for commercialization. And this is very important thing. We do need to raise the awareness for, for those uh, animals, just only to, to give, the, give the opportunity that the, the farmers or livestock owners to, to be able to, to rear them and take benefits from them. So we do need to understand the marginalized Viscous species and linked to the possible socioeconomic implication. Uh, also, this uh, commercialization, uh, commercialization and the potential transmission and the prevention of neglected zoonotic diseases. And this sentence is very important, actually, just to let you know that previously. <clears throat> Previously, uh, uh, we thought actually the animal specialists or veterinarians actually they, they think that the wild animal transmit uh, transmit uh, some certain diseases that are zoonotic, uh, zoonotic diseases. You, you know what I mean by zoonotic diseases that are shared by human by humankind and also the animal. So they were afraid from raising such such uh, uh, neglected breeds or smaller breeds or wild breeds that are that are. Uh, uh, <clears throat> not included actually in the in the production cycle of the livestock owner we do need to raise the awareness that some certain animal that they cannot they, they, they didn't transmit actually diseases to, to the human in the recent past the consumption of bush meat what do you mean bush meat right here the bush meat is the wild meat actually the, the meat that it produces from the wild animals actually has led to the emergence and re-emergence of zoonotic or zoonosis lies, we know the Ebola, the Ebola and avian influenza. Those are the major, actually, they were attack all the humankind. So many factors affecting actually the, those animals and push them away from the production cycle of the, uh, uh, from the livestock uh, owners uh, production cycle. Also, uh, we, now I will go directly to define Actually, I will try to, de to define the neglected and underutilized species. <clears throat> uh, actually, I found a, a reference that define it 
just only for the crops. And I, I, I actually modify this definition to meet the livestock uh, uh, requirements. Uh, this uh, uh, neglected and underutilized is a term used to describe, describe actually plants and the crops or even livestock where here where I add livestock that are paid little attention or are completely overlooked by agricultural researchers, plant and animal breeders, and also the policymakers. This is the main definition actually that can be given to the, to the neglected and underutilized species or breeds in general. Originally, the term uh, neglected underutilized was applied to the wild, previously was uh, applied to the wild or semi-domesticated crops or forest plants species. This is previously, but neglected, unutilized, underutilized are generally not sold as products. They do not sold it as a product. According to the FAO 2017, the term neglected, underutilized can also be substituted with other terms, such as we are the group as we can see that the forgotten, the forgotten breeds or species, underexploited, breeds or they can call it minor breeds or species or even orphan or promising or little use those are the uh, the terms that use for describing what we call the neglected underutilized species we can say the forgotten forgotten food forgotten animals forgotten species underexploited minor orphan and the other promising for example or little use there is a dearth actually if you go to the to the literature if you look for an internet or even in the published paper there is a dearth of literature in which the term neglected underutilized uh, species has been applied in the livestock research. So we have uh, uh, we had difficulty actually found uh, literature dealt with the forgotten or the minor or uh, <clears throat> neglected underutilized species. So we, we do need to dig more and more and we, can, we do need to start actually uh, uh, searching and take some information related to the neglected underutilized species, especially in the livestock area. Okay, now in this slide, you can see we can, uh, uh, we can actually in livestock in general, we can classify uh, the breeds or the species in general to, 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 uh, to, uh, to categories actually. One of them is the minor species, minor species, okay? The minor species in livestock here is term that uh, has been used to describe animal species that are not considered to be one of the major species. This is the minor. You can see minor. This minor also describe the animal species that are not considered to be one of the major species. When we are talking about the major species, we are talking about the big five animals or big seven, let us say. Yeah, talking... Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So we have uh, uh, the big, the major species, we are talking about the cattle. Uh, and the cattle that we have beef cattle and also dairy cattle, we have sheep, we have goat, we have the poultry and we have the camels. You know that the big five, okay? So those, the minor species are not among those major species. And also uh, the, the, the uh, and we can see the major, uh, the major species can be also defined as those livestock species that are dominant animal sourced food producing, as I saw, the big five animals, the large uh, ruminants, small ruminants, and also the, the poultry. Also, we can see another breeds, another type of animals, such as uh, we call minor, minor uh, species, such as the parrots. We have also ornamental fish and zoo animals. You can see also they are neglected. And we can see them, we can call them minor as we classify them here in minor. Also, with respect to livestock research, animal species that are of agricultural importance and are not among conventional animal species used as a major source of protein. And I, as I, I, as I uh, said previously, the protein sources are very important to the to humankind and the others. And uh, those are the minor. This group consists uh, of species such as guinea pigs. Also, we have goats. They are neglected with the small sizes. Also, some species, honey peas, catfish, and game birds. Those are among the minor uh, species. Also, <clears throat> you can see another things. Also, we have some certain challenge actually 
to define a neglected and utilized or underutilized livestock species. One likely reason for this challenge for this definition, if you go directly to define them, is the absence of the consortium actually for neglected livestock research. If you if you search worldwide, we don't have a consortium, okay, for neglected livestock uh, uh, research, leading to uh, a plethora of definition uh, applied in the uh, in different context uh, context. Actually, for instance, if you go to the uh, some ruminations or whatever, we can see the village poultry as an example. I hear I did an example. The poultry uh, village poultry can be seen uh, actually worldwide. Wherever you go, you can find the, the village poultry. But but uh, uh, has been or have been referred to as traditional. We can see some called the traditional breed, rural breed, local breed. We can see some of them call them also backyard or indigenous and even native. We have so many actually nominations that can be seen for the, the local or neglected unutilized uh, species or breeds. Uh, the unification of terminology for neglected livestock species may therefore be among the promising approaches for raising the profile of less research animal species. Another reason actually for, for this neglected undefined uh, breeds actually I can add it actually because of the the the, the less attention from the journal the famous journal that found worldwide for publishing some certain uh, uh, research regarding or related to that this neglected unutilized uh, thing in some terms you you submit a, a certain uh, paper for example if you dealt with the poultry local uh, local breed or poultry breed the native breed as whatever you, you call it, uh, it may reject it because it is of local interest this is also a major thing that caused this the neglection of those animals this is the major thing actually from my point of view actually so how can we start uh, selecting uh, the species Okay, based on the uh, representation, you can see a lot of uh, actually a lot of animals actually that are neglected. First of all, we do need to uh, 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 to see the different animal size. The size, as I told you previously, is very important for for the the, the livestock owners and also the, the 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 for those who are in, uh, interested in those animals. First, we do need to think about the size, whether it is micro or macro animals. Okay. We do need to know or to, to have some information related to the geographical scope of this species, the distribution of this uh, <coughs> species or breeds. In addition to uh, see the diversity of animal groups, whether they are poultry, rodents, ovine, bovine, wild, whatever uh, uh, we have. Uh, the fourth thing that is very important also uh, uh, for selecting uh, the animals th those that may are neglected or to study them, the differences in level of domestication. Uh, remember now that we are talking about farm animals and also uh, uh, in addition to the wild animal, the domestication process is very important. So we do need to, to see whether it is the degree of domestication for those species. Species which are recently domesticated are not domesticated. For example, grass cutter. You can see this is <clears throat> the grass cutter, okay? Uh, 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 recently domesticated, not, not domesticated actually. Also the availability of literature. The availability of literature is very important. We do need to, 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 to look for the, the, the sources, the research that have been published previously uh, uh, describing those animals. Even we can see the guinea fowl is more represented in the literature compared. We can see this, some examples related to them, and also the genetic informations and the value of the species or the breed. This is very important, just only to select or to start studying a neglected underutilized species. So those are the major six points that to be considered when you are, when you are uh, studying or searching for some certain uh, uh, neglected underutilized uh, breed. Okay, I, here I give, I, I represent actually from this, uh, in this slide, some, some some certain uh, breeds that found here in uh, in the Arabian countries, actually or region, actually, uh, for uh, that I can consider them actually uh, uh, neglected, underutilized. This figure or this picture is uh, uh, actually for something or for goat, small size goat, which is Angora goat. You can see, and also the Kashmir goat. All of us 
understand the Kashmir and also the high prices, expensive prices for this coat color. Actually, this coat is very expensive because we use it for, for clothing, you know, manufacturing the clothing. So this breed is, is called Mar'iz, okay? Bilkurdi, they call it Mar'iz, and uh, raised at high altitude in the mountains of Iraq, Kurdistan. This breed is neglected, underutilized, actually. It, 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 it can be found in, uh, actually in Iran, and also Zagros mountainous area that is extended to the Kurdistan region uh, in the north of Iraq. You can see the Mer as a breed. This breed is very important and have high economic value actually <laughs> that, can be, that can be utilized actually and also extended. The mohair, you know, that the Kashmir is very, very expensive. We can use it as I told you uh, for clothing manufacture. So, the, those are belong to the Kashmir bearing goat. They found in the Kurdistan in the north of Iraq, but you can note that the under coat fibers, we are talking about the fiber that used for clothing that, that taken from this breed of this breed are ignored. They cannot utilize it actually in the north uh, of uh, Iraq. Why? Due to the unfamiliarity uh, familiarity actually of the breeds with the importance of the Kashmir and the possibility of its, its process, uh, processing. They don't know how to get it. They don't know how to benefit actually from that, from it. They use it actually, unfortunately, for meat, meat uh, consumption. And uh, when I contact uh, the researcher who published this uh, paper, he told me that the, 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 the taste of this, uh, of the meat of this breed is very, very delicious. But but the awareness should be gone, gone to the or go to the to the fiber of this of this breed because it is a very small size and I I couldn't expect it to produce a high amount of, of meat actually they do need to also to produce the undercoat fiber just only to maximize the benefits from this breed also. What do you have? You can see this breed also the coat color they have variation actually many, many colors that can be found for the Angora or Mar'iz breed in the north of uh, Iraq, but they are under uh, <clears throat> underutilized, actually. I can say that they are underutilized. But I, I, uh, when I negotiate or discuss this thing with the, with El Barazanji, actually, he's my friend, a close friend, actually. Uh, he told me that when we, when we uh, transfer those animals from the mountain areas to the, for example, to Mosul, and the other uh, regions of Iraq, they, they will be infected with some certain diseases and they cannot produce. So the, the, the local uh, area for them, the, the, the optimum environment that can be found also, uh, they can be uh, also uh, found in the mountainous area of uh, Zagros uh, mountains area and also that extended to Iran. This is underutilized speed, neglected underutilized speed. The, the attention should, should be go to those animals. Also, I have taken some uh, pictures for this breed and they can shear it. You can see the shearing process. And unfortunately, they, they didn't take the benefits from under coat. Also, some information related to the flea seal. This is the flea seal and also the body length because the flea seal is uh, correlated significantly with the body length and the size of the animal. I take some information from his uh, published paper. Okay, for males and females, you can see the fleece weight uh, 1.4. Uh, the females is for sure is uh, because of the small size compared to, compared to the males will be uh, lower than the other and also the body length and the heart girth. You can see the heart girth, you can see the heart girth uh, is very uh, about 73.5 centimeter in males and 68.48 uh, centimeter. So uh, this paper actually that has been published 2012 this is the second one, the second paper that dealt with this this uh, this matter as a breed, because the 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 latest published paper was actually published uh, in the 16th or 17th of the uh, uh, the previous century. Actually, so we do need to take benefit from those uh, animals and uh, increase the awareness actually uh, for raising such uh, neglected breeds, and also we can see some other neglected, not underutilized. And I here I insert the uh, sorry, 
insert the uh, you know the dendrogram the tree actually the, in this uh, paper they were trying to see the diversity between several breeds such as the awasi hamdani karadi and also i observed something called jeff jeff breed what is jeff breed when i call them or contact them, what do you mean by Jeffrey Breed? Jeffrey Breed is special, actually. They told me a special line of, of Hamdani Breed with a specific uh, characteristics, but it is a threaten. It is at risk, actually. We don't hear. We, we have no information related to the Jeffrey Breed or, or line, of course. So we have so many breeds, locally breeds that are, that are neglected and need to be, uh, uh, to, uh, we need to dig more and just only to wear, to increase the awareness for such uh, breeds or species. Now, another example uh, uh, about the neglected underutilized breeds that I take those pictures from, from Sudan, okay? You can see the local cattle of the Sudan. All of them, the majority of them are zebu cattle. You can see the hump here, okay? And also the dulet and the other things. Okay, those animals, are found. We can see the population of the cattle of Sudan's cattle is reached about 50 million heads, around 50, 50 million heads. And also the same number is found also for the sheep. But those locally breeds produce very neglected amount of milk. They use it for, for meat production. But if we increase the awareness, if we improve those animals, we can take benefit, a lot of benefits actually from those animals, just only to support the, the food security in the Arab countries. This is very important. And if we take the example of the Americas, they import the zebu cattle, what we call the Brahmani breeds from, from uh, India, and they develop it in, in the US. And we can see the Brahmani breeds that look like those breeds are very famous. And I can say that any crossbreeding, any new modern breeds uh, that to be that to be distributed worldwide, they should have a certain percent of the Brahman, the Brahmani breed or the Zebu cattle or the hemp cattle. So why do we need, we do need actually to, 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 take, care, to take care of those local breeds. They are neglected and many, many actually, many, many species are neglected. And even they are found with, with millions actually, million heads, but without a production. I consider them underutilized underutilized breeds. So those are the Brahmani breeds. In addition to the Botana breed, we can see many, many actually breeds in, in, in the African, uh, in Africa actually, in Sudan mainly. This is the Botana breed. Uh, and actually I have uh, the opportunity actually to publish about five or seven uh, research article related to the breeds found in Sudan and Africa, and also to some certain uh, sheep uh, genetics actually. In addition to that, you can see the Watish breed. Okay, where is the figure? Uh, I don't know. Okay, sorry for that. Sorry. The Watish breed also is another example for a very important breed that found in the Arab countries, Arab region. This breed actually, I don't know why the, the, the picture is not found, not appeared actually. This breed produce, in average actually, uh, three lambs per lambing. Yani, three or four, in some cases they produce five actually. This genetic material should be exploited. They should be exploited and the gene that found in this breed should be also distributed to the others. We do need to select them based on the genomic information, not only just only to, to, to ignore them or underutilize them. We have a, a very famous, very rich actually uh, information, very rich breeds, but they do, we do need to exploit them and distribute them just only for the benefit of our food security, actually. <coughs> now, we will go to the buffalo. The buffalo breed is very famous that can be found in Iraq and also in, 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 in Egypt. Now, this buffalo can also previously was found here in Jordan, but it is extinct actually from Jordan. Now, if we can, if we can go, if we can uh, uh, compare actually the milk production of this buffalo with the cattle breed, with the freezing actually, let us go to the freezing, just only the fat percent of the buffalo milk is ranged between eight up to 13 percent. This breed is a promising one we do need to reintroduce it to some countries that have been previously raised it. And we don't need to have water. We don't need to have rivers actually. 
we know that those they, they, they lack something called the spaces gland also on the uh, the other glands for evaporation and so for the cooling of those animals we can we can offer them some some other uh, certain very low expensive uh, materials just only to raise them in jordan or other countries that that, that, that haven't uh, uh, rivers or whatever okay so the underutilized for animal prey. Now I will go to the core of my discussion, actually. Underutilized for animals. From the title, you can see that the farm animals, they are the big five, actually, as I told you. Cattle, sheep, okay, poultry, and also <coughs> uh, the camels. But what's the problem with them? Are they here or what? Are they underutilized? Can we consider them neglected? Okay, the global major far animals, as we see, the large and small ruminants, poultry species, in addition to the other lower economic importance. Now the question is, are all those species or breeds within a species are utilized? Even if we found them with, 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 with millions as a number, millions of heads, and with, with low production, they are underutilized we do need to increase their productivity. We do need to conserve them. We do need to improve, improve them worldwide, actually. Just only to support our food security, food supply. They can contribute a lot, actually, for our soil. So again, are all those species or breeds, or breeds within a species, are utilized? The question, no. They are underutilized. The answer, sorry. So let us take some... <clears throat> information, examples, for example, characterize uh, 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 the performance, for example, those local breeds that I'm talking about, the local, the big five, okay, that are characterized as of highly resistant to harsh conditions. Yes, usually we, we, we usually write the sentence, this sentence in our published paper, they are highly resistant to harsh conditions and they can maintain themselves under the cold or heat or whatever uh, environment. But what about the productivity? This is, this is the important thing. What about their productivity? Oh, okay, they have, they have high resistance, but we do need also to look, to, to, to concentrate on the, their productivity. They do exploit all their genetic potential. Do, do we exploit all their genetic potential? Can we, do they produce a lot of milk or meat or whatever in terms of productivity? Also, milk production is underutilized. Meat production, underutilized. Also, the wheel, the, uh, the wool or, or hair production is neglected. And some certain breeds, if you go, <clears throat> Again, they are neglected. Actually, the wool production from Oasis sheep in Jordan, it's neglected. They threw it up. They, don't, they didn't take any benefit from it. Actually, the, the largest farmers. So this is an important thing to be raised also. Can we claim that we obtain and succeed in generating all genetic potential of our local breeds? This is another question to be answered. Local breeds, if we compare local breeds with with the global improved breeds, we can see that the local breeds are very low milk producers or meat producer compared to the exotic breeds. They have high fat percent, but the exotic breed with amount, high amount of milk, they produce low fat person. This is this came from what? And we, we know this thing because there is a negative correlation between the high amount of milk and also the fat percent found in this milk. Local breeds with low milk production, but with, with high fat percent. Low fat percent, high, high milk uh, or beef in general. High resistant to local conditions, the exotic, they have moderate resistant, if not, okay? Uh, the local, it is linked to our heritage or traditional knowledge, but the exotic introduced to our societies. They are introdu introduced, not linked to, the, our, to our traditional knowledge. Uh, the local have may have genes of high importance. The exotics may have also, but the genes that found here in, in the local breed may not found in the exotic breed. Because of that, I, I write here something called today's animals, maybe not the future ones. Maybe not, because if you face any problem in the feeding, feeding uh, or the feeds for those exotic breeds, 
they cannot produce without feeding, but the, the local breeds can do it. They can produce with minimum uh, minimum feeds, but they have a potential. They have a potential of genetic, a potential for productivity. Okay. Hello? How we manage our animals? How can we manage our animals? This is another story. Why we face those low productivity of those animals? We don't know the exact potential of our local breeds. No selection process is, is also adopted for or practiced uh, for those animals. If existed, I mean the selection, okay? Depend, it depends on random, not directed criteria. The improvement usually applied through what we call, and this is a traditional thing that be, is known for many breeders by mating strategy or selection. And we can see that the phenotypic selection that can be applied actually in, in nationally at national level in Arab countries, we don't have uh, certain criteria for selection. We don't apply the selection criteria. But if we apply it, we apply it by using just only the phenotypic uh, appear, the phenotypic of the of the animals. And we know the environment and also the genetics contribute to this phenotypic. This is very important to be known. But the selection also, if we dig more in the phenotype. We can see we have phenotype and also the genetic environmental effects and also the genetic effects. But even if we go to the estimated the breeding values, the breeding values, if we select the animals according to the breeding values, or even the uh, previously for the genetic parameter, what we call heritability and the other genetic parameter, we are digging, we are looking for just only, we are working in the black square. We don't know nothing. Breeding value give us some information, it's good. It can be improved our local breed because the traditional breeding based on those things. But recently we have the genetic conformations actually fill the blank square actually that found here. It has been filled, but for a certain extent, not all of it. We still have more and more things to be to be discovered actually, just only to give the opportunity for those animals to be selected according to, to their genetic informations and the other things. So our local breeds, we actually lack those information at national level, not, I'm talking about national level, not station level. Station level, we have some, some a lot of actually things that, uh, uh, that applied in selection, but the other national breeds, the national, uh, the national flock actually wouldn't have. The national flock consists uh, about, uh, uh, 95%, more than 95% of the total population uh, found in any country. So our local breed are unknown. This is the, the major thing, unknown in terms of genetic potential. So they have, they are neglected and underutilized. We don't, we don't know their genetic potential. Uh, their productivity is very low compared to the exotic breeds. We can say all breeds should be conserved and improved. Now let us go to see the Arabian food security numbers that reflects our livestock productivity. Now I will give you some informations related to, uh, to the food security, uh, the Arabian food security, okay? The Arabian food security, just a minute. Okay, so from this slide, you can see I'm so sorry because I have problems related to, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, the Arabian livestock sector characteristics, now I will go directly to, to, to characterize the, the livestock sector in, in the Arabian countries. Uh, from this figure, you can see the, the major five or big five animals. Uh, the total number of the Arabian livestock is just only uh, uh, represent only 8.7% of the total uh, animals found worldwide globally. You can see just only we have uh, not so much. We have 8.7 just only percent of the total livestock population worldwide. And you can see the numbers. The major livestock is the uh, is the sheep? It is in, in the area in the in the Arab countries actually. It is about uh, fifty two point three or point four percent of the total livestock uh, uh, animal uh, population actually, followed by the uh, the goats, which is twenty six, and <clears throat> the cattle, 
is about 15% uh, in addition to the other species. And you can see I had here, I did a comparison between uh, the, uh, uh, the years actually from 2015 up to 2018. We can see a slight increase in the population of those animals. Uh, uh, through the uh, different, different years, actually, uh, that has been inserted in the comparison. Okay. Now, uh, the development of this livestock numbers uh, by type, actually, uh, and the world during uh, 2015 up to 2018 in million hits, you can see through 2015 up to 2018, you can see the, <clears throat> the, uh, the trend in the Arabian countries. You can see it is almost the same, almost. If you can, you can see, observe that 2015 is, uh, we can see some elevation up to uh, 2016, 2017, and also to, to 2018. And you can see the different numbers of population for cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, camels. And if you compare it with the world or the global uh, population number, you can see uh, the differences. Now, we do need to characterize the production system of those animals. Most of those livestock are raised in a traditional pastoral system with low meat and milk productivity, marketing efficiency of live animals and their productive products are very low. The pressure on natural pasture increases and also in addition to the breeders dependent on the traditional breeding uh, and their lack of connection to the market. This is another uh, characteristic of the production system found in the Arabian countries. Uh, <clears throat> that obligate the Arabian region to import many, many animals, products, animal products, because of its inability to fill the nutritional gap. We have a very big nutritional gap found in the Arabian countries. Okay, we import, we are importers actually. Now, if we go to the food security components, the first one as, all of us know that the food availability, the availability of the food, you can see this is the major countries that uh, with population, uh, animal population, the Sudan, you can see we have, this is the, the major or the dominant or the, the, the highest uh, animal population that can found in Sudan, followed by Somalia, Algeria, Morocco, Mauritania, Yemen, and Egypt. But if you go to the meat production, red meat production, this is the second, in the second, Figure, you can see also Sudan produce the highest meat production. But if you compare the second one here, you can see the second one is Egypt. But if you compare it with the number, total number of animals found in Egypt, you can see this is in the, you can see it is in the seventh, seventh <coughs> rank. Low number of animals compared to Sudan, but their productivity is much better than Somalia, Algeria, and the other countries who has, uh, or who have, sorry, uh, uh, high population number of animals. Why? I think they have, they have many, uh, many factors actually contribute to this productivity. Uh, among them is the availability of feeds, among them is the availability of wood management, production system, maybe the genetic improvement for, for some extent, not so much. You can see the, 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 uh, the, the, the things that we can see. Sudan is the first. OK, Sudan is the first as a red meat producer in the Arab countries. But Somalia is the second in the number. But Somalia, here we go. We, can, we cannot find Somalia a red meat production. Again, if you go to the milk production, uh, production of the meat, sorry, again, OK, or the other products, actually. I, I draw a figure here. Uh, I made a comparison between uh, four years, actually, 2015 up to 2018. We can see uh, if we compare the fish 2015 up to 2018, we can see the elevation of all animal products in terms of red meat, white meat, milk, egg, and fish. The milk production high has the highest, actually, elevation in its productivity through the, the studied years, actually. And this came not from the local breeds. This elevation not from the, the, is not produced from the local breeds because the import the importation of Frisian cattle, the exotic breeds from outside the Arabian country. Even we have high number of animals that can be produced, but we they are neglected. They are underutilized actually. Again, 
the poultry meat production, we are talking about food, food security. The <clears throat> poultry production, the highest country is, we can see uh, Egypt, followed by Morocco, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Algeria, and Jordan. And now we have uh, uh, Jordan, you can see the big or the highest countries in, in, in poultry meat uh, production. Uh, okay, many factors actually uh, contribute to this figure. Uh, we can discuss it later. Egg production also can be found. The Arab region egg production reached about 2.4 million tons in 2018 compared to 2.3 million tons in 2017. The Arab region pr production of eggs contribute, as, as you see, estimated globally, the, <clears throat> the egg production globally is 89 percent, 0.5 million tons. Now we have 2.7 almost percent of this uh, production. Milk production, you can see, oh, again, again, Egypt came the first in milk production. Even it has a, a, a low number of animals, if you compare to the Sudan, but they produce much better than the local breeds found in Sudan. Because of this, I, I, I consider them they are as neglected and underutilized breeds. We do need to work more, actually, on those farm animals or, or neglected, underutilized breeds, again. For fish production, also the figure is, is obvious. The value of export and import in, in terms of uh, live animals, you can see uh, the importation. How can we import from outside the Arab region? Actually, <clears throat> we import uh, many things. The importation, we import uh, the major uh, importation was for milk production and its uh, products, which is 6.46. Uh, the second red meat, red meat of one, sorry. 4.6, 2.04, we import live animals actually and other products, but exportation, you can see the humble, actually humble numbers, humble numbers of exportation. We, we export uh, the largest component exported from livestock is live animal, which is not about 0.5, not so much, okay? So this is the figure. This is the, the, the figure of the, of the largest contribution to our uh, food security. Now, if you go to the cell sufficiency rate in the Arab region, we can see uh, uh, the, the total meat uh, cell sufficiency in 2018 reached about seven, 75%. The, red, the total meat, I mean, when we talk about total meat, it, uh, we merge red meat with the white meat from poultry and the other species. But if you go to the red meat, it's about 81%. We have so many uh, breeds to be slaughtered, but not in all countries, as you see Sudan, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, and the others. The white meat is about 70%. Uh, <coughs> uh, fish about, you know, we have so much self-sufficiency in some certain countries, not all of them, egg and the other things. Now, uh, finally, I have uh, this picture that captured from Oman actually again, and you can see the diversity of the locally breeds found in the Arab region. And many thanks for your listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khalil, for this uh, thorough presentation. Thank actually, you. I learned a lot from uh, your presentation. Actually, Dr. Khalil, he is the coordinator of the uh, animal production uh, network. So you, you yourself take the questions and uh, thank you. Leave the discussion now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Rida. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, any question, actually? <laughs> it will be as discussion, actually. Any, any, any ideas related to the neglected, underutilized livestock species and the other things? Actually, I'm proud of our, our actually uh, livestock uh, uh, found here in the Arab region, but we do need to work more and more just only to improve their productivity and put them in the large producers, not neglected and utilized. Okay. Questions? See, Dr. Dr. Ali is raising his hand. Dr. Ali. Yes. Father, Dr. Uh, Ali. Is yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khalil, for your presentation. Really, I also yani, learned and uh, enjoyed your presentation. In your uh, earlier slides, uh, you mentioned about the, uh, of the local breed that were could be يعني, lost uh, and uh, uh, something uh, يعني, thing my uh, my observation that the European countries lost more of the uh, of their local breed 
Yes. Uh, so can you explain why the European countries lost more of their local breeds? Yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe I can answer the question directly right now, just a little to support the time. Uh, the actually, uh, worldwide, actually, globally, actually, uh, the, 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 all the countries concentrated in specific breeds. The modern breeds invaded all the countries, actually. They concentrate in, for example, if you go to Holland or the European countries, they, in, in cattle breeds, they concentrate in the Frisian. They do have local breeds, but the farmers usually prefer the high producers and they concentrate in raising Frisians and ignore the local breeds. This is the main reason for this. Uh, uh, extinction, actually. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Alessandro is raising his hand. Yeah. Alessandro is from GFR and he is following up with uh, Dr. Heli Garban. Okay, Dr. Alessandro. And the manifesto for the forgotten food and uh, neglected and underutilized species. Alessandro. Yeah, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rida. And uh, Khalil, thank you very much for this presentation, which uh, <clears throat> actually is uh, shedding a lot of light of one area of the noose uh, that we, we neglect. I mean, when we look at noose and we think we are uh, uh, doing already something good, uh, we forget animals, we forget livestock. And I've seen this in uh, parts of the manifesto. So it's important that we reintegrate <clears throat> And an attention which is not only devoted to seeds and to uh, genetic uh, diversity in plants, but is also directed to uh, to animals. That's something that I really praise in your uh, in your um, presentation. Now, the question I wanted to ask you is, uh, in the perspective of using precisely this uh, uh, <clears throat> regional focus that you're opening now, um, <clears throat> and we would like to continue exchanging between countries and between continents. So what you have now raised, I think, is very important for Asia Pacific and is very important uh, uh, also for Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> How would you suggest us to, uh, to proceed uh, uh, if we want also to have uh, this kind of topics uh, identified in those regions so that we do not over-concentrate on, uh, on uh, plant genetic resources? Okay, uh, thank you, Alessandro, for this uh, very important question. Actually, uh, 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 from from the, the from the opinion of the uh, animal conservation, actually, not genetic improvement. I will ask from this direction, not from animal genetic improvement. The uh, the conservation persons usually concentrate on the local breeds. The first thing to be raised for those livestock owners that the importance of those local breeds. We do need to value value we call value those 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 animals. Just only to give the attention for them from the, the livestock owner because the livestock <coughs> owners who kept those those animals. So we do need to value those animal for, for uh, we, we may we may uh, say, uh, we may look for the the traditional knowledge related to those animals just only to give them the opportunity to, to raise them for for for, for extent for for instance actually uh, uh, we may go to some certain country that they use they take some product from those local animals to treat uh, the human for certain diseases this is a very nice idea just only that I, I i said it through my uh, presentation that we do need to raise the awareness of the local uh, for the local breeds found in the different regions of the world. Now, if you go back to the to the feed crisis that existed ten years ago, actually when the the the, the biofuel uh, consume all the, uh, the 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 corn and also the the barley, the prices is elevated. In Jordan, I can give you because at that time I conduct a, a survey and I collect information related to those animals. Uh, the, the, the farmers who raise the freezing cattle, freezing cattle need a lot of uh, high amount of feed, just only to produce 20 kilograms or 25 kilograms of milk. But if you go to the local breed, they return back to the local breed. They produce low amount of milk, but they can go outside, eat anything, but they can produce two or up to five kilograms. This is how can we start? We can start by, by <coughs> defining the, the, the major local breed found in, in the several countries. Uh, that, uh, uh, we do need to value them. We do need to link them with the traditional knowledge. 
we do need to uh, uh, maybe you know that many procedures can be used just only to give uh, the uh, the livestock owners the opportunity to, to raise such uh, local breeds. We have questionnaire actually, actually Dr. Rida, uh, you know that we have established our uh, a questionnaire just only to collect the information related to the local breeds and their importance to, to, to the human. And this is the point of a start. We can start from here, collect all the information and start meeting the, the, the farmers, the livestock owners, the uh, anyone who is interested in the neglected or the local breeds and start dealing with them, giving them the information that the benefits from raising such animals. And this actually, is- Actually, Alessandro at Arenina, we are considering the plant, animals, fish, and also the fungi. So we yes, are working- Yes, I, uh, uh, I saw that wide approach you have. That's very interesting. And it's very stimulating for the other continents. دكتور محمد عجدوني اوكي شكرا جزيلا ثانك يو فيري ماتش خليل فور ذا اي اي كان ستارت وذ اليساندرو كويستشن اي ثينك اليساندرو فروم يور كويستشن اي كان سجست فور يو جي فار تو هاف ان انتر ريجنال بروجكت اور كولكتيف اكشن اون انيمال جينيتيك ريسورسز اف اي اندرستاند your uh, uh, question very well. I think the best thing to do is through a collective action that include these starting first of all from the important regions. We can start with Arenina, Farah, and maybe uh, 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 Apari, if, if it is there, you see? And in this case, we can start uh, 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 I mean, standardized the methodology among these regions and collect all this information as Khalil said. And it, it can include both database and awareness program that can, you know, uh, uh, raise, uh, uh, conserve these underutilized species. Uh, uh, this, is, this is the first, uh, uh, you know, uh, suggestion. The second thing, you know, Khalil, uh, I don't know, I want to utilize the presence of uh, uh, Alessandro again, uh, because uh, some, some, when we start talking about underutilized species, we are talking about the species that are out of cropping or out of use. Now, Khalil brought another terminology where partial use because yeah. some of them some of the species are used but not are used fully so we have when we want to talk about underutilized species we have to be very clear if it means that the species is not used or it is not fully used like for example using milk but it is not used it is wool or something like that yeah. so we have to to uh, 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 stick to the terminology where we have to uh, uh, to do it. Even though when we do any you know, program or project, we usually do, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, concentrate our uh, 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 awareness program on all the uses. Yes. The use of the species at, at all and the uses of it is uh, uh, product, you see. Yes. So we have to 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 be very uh, 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 stick to stick to the definition and see. Uh, I don't know if uh, Alessandro has some uh, question. I mean, answer about this. You know, when I was working with uh, Padre Lossi, we are talking about species that has not been used totally in plants, but now in animals, it's it's maybe different. You know, in livestock. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Actually, uh, when I when I think about this this subject, because it is the first to be actually presented on, uh, we, as I told you, we don't have uh, references regarding the, the, the livestock, but we do need to to have a brainstorming. Actually, I, I think deeply in this uh, in this aspect, and and I came came with the, with those results, with those with those ideas. Okay, we have some local breeds, but we don't have benefits from them. They are underutilized. But if you go go to the to the to the, we have neglected, underutilized. Okay, we, the, the, the species are found, the breeds are found, but we, we have nothing from them. 
We don't need to exploit them. It should be included in the definition, yeah, actually, yes, of yes, the yes, yes. neglected, underutilized ability. This is the, uh, how can I, I come with this thought. This I think it's okay if you agree with me. Thank you very much. I see uh, Dr. Aisha. Dr. Aisha. Aisha. Aisha, yeah. Dr. Dr. Aisha. Are you with us? Dr. Aisha from Inra. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Yeah, hello, yeah, hello, Victoria. Thank you very much for your uh, for your uh, presentation. It's very interesting. I see. I I, um, I think that uh, if you integrated the traditional knowledge in uh, in all project of uh, of animal space or uh, uh, utilization. Is because the um, traditional knowledge is pillar of uh, scientific knowledge. Yeah. Uh, if you um, if you um, integrated uh, social science in uh, in all projects, you can uh, you get uh, more information or database about uh, underutilization. Uh, thank you very much uh, in, for your invitation. Uh, thank you. Uh, good Dr. luck. <laughs> thank you very much. Actually, if you if you go back to the conservation process, if you have a project for animal conservation or even the plant conservation process, the first thing that to to be collected is the is the traditional knowledge, the traditional knowledge for this certain breed or or a plant, whatever we have. Uh, uh, animal or breed. So this is the first step to be collected in order to evaluate. This is the valuation of the breed. In order to evaluate the breed, the value, to, to come up with the value of the breed that is not a present, that, that, is, we, we, that is not, is unknown actually, it is unknown for the livestock owners or even the society that there, there is this, uh, this breed. We do need to collect uh, this thing. And this is among the steps that followed for animal conservation or plant conservation uh, process. Thank you, Dr. Ashi, for this point. Thank you. Questions? There are no questions, Dr. Call. Khalila. Dr. Muhammad. OK. Uh, there are no questions, Dr. Khalil. I have two. Uh, OK, I think there is from Adam. Dr. Adam, I think there is a question, OK? Yeah. Uh, as, uh... Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Khalil, for the very interesting uh, presentations yes. about livestock issue in uh, Arab region. It's really this most important, and we have many problems in this sector. Uh, uh, especially, I think these uh, limitations come from the institutions, our institutions, and our government. You know, these sectors is very important, but you know, uh, to ensure that the ecosystem should be complementary. Uh, even uh, to affect the climate change also if affect more in this sector. So to complement the, between ecosystem and forestry sections, it's most important to, for conversations, to conservation our uh, our species. But you know, the most important thing is so, we have to know much important about uh, genetic evaluation, to have to evaluate our species and uh, we have to assist how to how to assist our species to know that which she uh, can produce milk or uh, or uh, fat or any other uh, traits. That's most important things. Yes. So for this issue, we need uh, really uh, collaboration between national, or international, and regionals to improve this sector. It's most important to for food security for everything. So uh, it's really that that's most important things. So. The, what's the opportunity to improve this sector about uh, this sector exactly in Arab regions? And uh, what do you think about these limitations is exactly related to government or institutions or how to overcome these limitations? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adam. Actually, uh, uh, yes, I'm with you. The production system, the climate exchange is very important and everything related to the the ecosystem is very important for the for for any any species actually not only the animals it should be included in terms of this but if you go to the to your question uh, where is the problem <laughs> the problem is found here there and anywhere we have for example the livestock owners they do not they do not they actually the majority of them not all of them actually 
I don't, I cannot claim that the majority. They, they cannot, they didn't, they didn't believe in the, in the conservation. They do need to take benefits, benefits from the animals. If you, if, if you give an, uh, uh, the, the, the livestock owner or cattle breeder or dairy cattle uh, uh, herder, actually, uh, if you give the locally breed with a freeze and a breed that can produce in Sudan, for example, environment, they cannot produce, actually. If you do need to, to do the crossbreeding actually in order to be able to produce. But if you give him the chance to, 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 to choose which one to collect, to, to use or to rear, uh, the local one or the, 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 the freezing one, the freezing, he will collect the freezing because of the high productivity. The government should work on this thing. They do need to, to as, I, as, I, as, I, as Dr. Mohammed said that, and also uh, I, we, the discussion raised in, through the, 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 the lecture that we do need to raise the awareness of the, for the importance of those local breeds. We do need to, to, to encourage the government to work uh, closely with, the, with the, the cooperative. We do need to also, the international agencies should work closely with the, with the, with the, with the countries who has actually who has a, a, a high amount or high number of, of, of livestock. Actually, each one has his uh, responsibility that to be uh, discussed and his input uh, is very important, even if we are talking about the governments, the local, the international or, or regional agencies. I hope that I answer you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. So, I think uh, there are no questions. I have three things to say. The first thing is actually uh, we have a series of lectures and presentations from eminent experts in the forgotten food, uh, neglected and underutilized species. So uh, I think next month we will be having a uh, presentation about the uh, fish and the, this sector so uh, please join us and then after that we'll be having for the fungi and we'll continue our series of uh, lectures from eminent researchers uh, i think next time we'll be having with us muhammad tawa who's an expert in the marines and uh, please join us that's the first thing the second thing for those who are interested in date palm today at 7 p.m jordan time now we jordan we have the summer time so please, when you look at the uh, time, uh, please consider that now Jordan has a summer time. Uh, so at seven o'clock, we will be having a presentation about the uh, pollination in uh, Deglanur uh, date palm. So please, for those who are interested in date palm to join us at 7 uh, p.m. this evening. Uh, third thing, I would like to thank you, Dr. Uh, Khalil, for this thorough and comprehensive presentation yeah. on this issue. And actually, I think now with the discussion and the, the point which Dr. Ajdoni also raised with Alessandro, uh, I think we uh, really ready at Arenina to uh, join through our members and through our experts the project on uh, working on those issues. And this is really a very important thing to do and I think it's time to start working on those things and really I appreciate GFAR for uh, this initiative for the uh, manifesto for the uh, collective action and the plan they are doing on this uh, direction so this is the other thing which I, also I would like to thank all colleagues who joined us today in uh, this discussion uh, and also sharing their experiences also please if you know of anybody who is really uh, in this field and could join us in the uh, coming uh, webinars and also the coming presentations and also, uh, so please send us the email, the name, so we can invite people because we would like to uh, really have more people joining us in this uh, direction because I think even this presentation, joining the presentations together is part of the awareness and how really we can work in this uh, direction. So if you don't have anything, I would like also to uh, thank you, Dr. Khair, again for this presentation. I know you came over today and to your office to give us this presentation, although you uh, already uh, had the COVID-19 and you are still suffering some heat and some, uh, but you, know that I have some. Yes. <laughs> you prefer to join us and to have the presentation and uh, this webinar and it's time. Thank you so much and have a nice uh, evening. I wish you all the best. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.
And since since it's Women's Day, also I would like to wish our uh, colleagues uh, all the best in their life and their job and their work. And Women's we really Day, are yes. proud of our uh, colleagues who are really doing an excellent work in different fields. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank Thank you. Have a nice okay. day. Thank Thank you so thanks for all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice presentation. You're welcome.